right, thanks for watching. And do you like crazy math? Do you like the Chen Lu? Well, today's video is for you because we will derive the Laplacian in polar coordinates and it becomes very messy yet very beautiful. So just watch the video and you'll find out. Because on a previous video, we've seen that the Laplacian is invariant under rotations, which suggests it might be nice to express the Laplacian in polar coordinates. Which I like to remember, remind you the Laplacian of u, it's uxx plus uyy in two dimensions. So here's a problem then. Suppose you have polar coordinates which I like to remind you it's x equals to r cosine theta and y equals to r sine theta. And what's useful here is we can express r in terms of x and y. So r is square root of x squared plus y squared and theta is arctangent of y over x. Then the question is what does uxx plus uyy equals zero become in terms of r, r and theta. And as I said, this is a Chen Lu extravaganza. It's probably the craziest Chen Lu you'll see in your life. So uh, just beware. And the process is as similar as before. We, you know, we calculate dx dr, dx d theta, and just express this in terms of r and theta. But what was nice in the previous video is that theta was fixed. Now we need to be aware that theta is a variable here. But what's nice is we still have sort of nice formulas for r, dr, dx, etc., etc. So note, for instance dr dx, what this becomes, it's the derivative of this with respect to x, so 1 over 2 square root of x squared plus y squared times 2x. This simplifies, you get x over r if you want, but that becomes r cosine theta over r, which is just cosine theta. So that's nice already. So dr over dx is cosine theta. And we do have similar formulas in a similar matter. Uh, dr over dy. Yeah, dr over dy becomes sine of theta. And if you use the arctangent definition of theta, d theta over dx becomes minus sine of theta over r and d theta over dy becomes cosine theta over r. Remember this? This will be very useful in a second because now we're ready to chen lu. So let's calculate ux. Well, that's du over dx. And we just want to differentiate the hell out of everything. So this becomes du over dr dr over dx plus du over d theta, d theta over dx. Because we want to differentiate with respect to x. So we want to do this with r and theta. Okay, the good news is we have all our formulas here. So this becomes u r cosine theta plus u theta minus sine of theta over r. Okay, not that bad. I promise you it's gonna get worse now. So let's do uxx. That becomes, you know, uxx, and that is dux over dr, dr over dx, plus dux over d theta, d theta over dx, and now you have to use this formula. So it's this differentiated with respect to r times cosine theta plus this differentiated with respect to theta times this minus theta of sine of theta over r. 
So we get a huge mess. You know, I, I'm scared too. It's like, what's gonna happen? So I have good news though, it does simplify. So basically we get such a gigantic mess which simplifies once you know the other term. So what we get is again, you are cosine of theta minus u theta sine of theta over r. Okay, that was our ux. Now we need to differentiate this with respect to r. Cosine of theta, which was dr over dx. And now plus all this again, you are cosine theta minus u theta sine of theta over r with respect to theta and then minus sine of theta yeah. let me write this here minus sine of theta over r okay now before it was nice because we said theta is constant, so we don't have to worry about this. The problem is your theta and r, they're all variables. So we need to make sure to really differentiate things with respect to r. So let's see which, which of the things depend on r. Well, u r depends on r. Theta luckily doesn't depend on r, so not a problem. But u theta depends on r, and 1 over r depends on r. So we need to use not only the Chen Lu, but also the Prada Lu, the product rule, because we have a product of two things. And worse here, this depends on theta, this depends on theta, this depends on theta, this depends on theta. So it's like a Prada Lu extravaganza, if you want. And then, again, roll up your sleeves. Mine are already rolled up, so I'm ready. I hope you are. Then what you get is, first you differentiate this. U R R, cosine of theta. Luckily, this in this sense becomes constant, so you don't have to worry about this. Here we do have to worry, so it becomes U theta R, sine of theta over R. Okay, and then plus. Or if you want, you, you differentiate this, derivative of one over r, it's minus one over r squared, with the minus becomes a plus. So plus uh, u theta, uh, sine of theta over r squared. And all this times cosine theta. And this becomes a bit worse, plus. Now we need to differentiate everything with respect to theta. So u r theta, cosine theta, minus u r, u r sine of theta, minus u theta theta, sine of theta over r, minus u theta, cosine theta over r, and then all of this times minus sine of theta over r. Woo. Okay, now let's expand this out again. Okay. I know, crazy, huh? <laughs> so again, very powerful. We don't know what the solutions of Laplace's equation are. expand this out. What do you get? I believe it. U R R cosine squared theta minus U R theta sine of theta cosine theta over R plus U theta sine of theta cosine theta over R squared. Good. And then minus u r theta cosine theta sine of theta over r because we have the minus because of this term here and i believe plus u r sine squared theta over r plus u theta 
of theta sine squared theta over r squared and then plus u theta sine of theta cosine theta over r squared. It looks horrible. Luckily, there's some little glints of hope. Those two terms are equal. So this simplifies. And then also those two terms are equal. So this simplifies. So in the end, okay. and then it looks messy, but lots of terms simplify. Well, not lots of them, but two of them simplify. So we get URR cosine squared theta minus two ur theta sine of theta cosine theta over r and then plus two u theta sine of theta cosine theta over r squared and then plus u r sine of squared theta over r and then plus u theta theta sine squared theta over r squared. And I know some of you are flexing, are like, ah, you can write this as sine of 2 theta. Good for you, but we don't really need it because it will cancel out, okay? <laughs> I know you know algebra, okay? So, um, and then, so this becomes, after all this, what have we calculated? This was uxx which looks pretty horrible, but luckily we do have a similar formula for UYY, which will cancel out all those terms. So basically what you get if you combine all of those So we get uxx plus uyy equals the one formula we already have. So urr cosine squared theta and then minus 2ur theta sine of theta cosine theta over r and then plus u theta sine of theta cosine theta over r squared and then plus u r sine squared theta over r plus u theta theta sine squared theta over r squared. So that was our u x x term and now look at the u y y term. How beautiful is that? u r r sine squared theta plus u r theta I guess sine of theta cosine theta over r minus 2u theta uh, sine of theta cosine theta over r squared plus u r sine squared, uh, no, it might be cosine squared theta probably. Yeah, over r and plus u theta theta cosine squared theta over r squared. Now, again, so your math is beautiful. Those two terms, they cancel out. Those two terms, they cancel out. And then we just use that cosine squared plus sine squared equals one, and you get at the end u r r plus u r over r plus u theta theta over r squared. Almost sounds like a black eyed pea song. You are, you are, you are. Okay, but that's good, I guess. Okay, why? Because, so you are, we, what have you found? We found polar Laplace equation. We found that the Laplacian in polar coordinates becomes u r r plus u r over r plus u theta theta over r squared. Now, you might be like, why did we take a perfectly nice equation and make it ugly like that? Because it turns out by making it so ugly, we can actually solve this. 
Because I don't know if you remember from a previous video, I said that the Laplacian is invariant under rotations. So if you take a, a solution of Laplace's equation, you rotate it, you still get solutions of Laplace's equation. Now, it does not imply, but it suggests that it might be good to look for radial solutions. Namely, for solutions which do not depend on theta. And for this, this equation is nice. So suppose u is a function of r only. Then we know that u theta equals 0. It doesn't depend on theta. So what does this become? Well, this becomes u r r plus u r over r. And if it's harmonic, if it solves Laplace's equation, it now becomes 0. And what this is, it's an ODE that we can actually solve. So if you want, just to, by using calculus, you get URR equals minus UR over R. So URR over UR equals minus 1 over R. So LN of absolute value of UR prime equals minus 1 over R. This implies LN of UR equals minus ln of r plus some constant. Therefore, if you want ur equals e to the minus ln of r, e to the constant. So ur becomes this, but with a plus and minus. Okay. This becomes a generic constant. So. Sorry if I go in circles. You are become C e to the minus ln of r, but that is C over e to the ln of r, and that is C over r. If you want, get r is positive, so it doesn't matter. So you are, so you becomes. Is that correct? One second. Um, no, it's good. Okay, then therefore, so u r becomes c over r, so u equals c ln, if you want an absolute value of r, but r is positive, so c ln of r plus c prime. And with this, we do have the fundamental solution of Laplace's equation in two dimensions, which, if you want, ignore the c constant here. It's c ln of square root of x squared plus y squared. Don't you get a solution of Laplace's equation in two dimensions, and it turns out, if you want, it's another video I've done more advanced. If you choose, I think, minus 1 over 2 pi, you get a special solution of Laplace's equation called the fundamental solution. Last but not least, one more remark. How do you do it in higher dimensions? There is a video on that where you just directly assume it's uh, radial and then solve this. But in particular, in three dimensions, you get, you basically use spherical coordinates. It's like 10,000 times harder than this. But essentially what you get in the end is that some similar equation, u r r plus 2 over r u r plus some junk equals 0 where here r is square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's again 3D. And you can solve this to eventually get u x y z equals minus c over square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And it turns out there's a, again, special value of c, which makes it the fundamental solution. So. Even though it's harder, it's the exact same process. So nice thing, you can just extrapolate from this. All right, I hope you like this Laplace extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.